Gold for ordinary people. Gold for chemists. Oh, agent. Hello everyone! In this video I am going to tell you about gold, a metal which can be used not only for making jewelry, but also for making highly effective medicines and even tests for different diseases. In the periodic table of chemical elements, gold along with silver and copper belongs to group 11. The history of humankind is closely intertwined with these three resistant metals because, due to their low reactivity, they naturally occur in their pure forms. But, in contrast to silver and copper, people first noticed pure gold, because its glossy shine attracted more attention than dull silver and copper ores. About 40,000 years ago, our ancestors began using this metal as jewelry, because gold is too soft for making tools or weapons. This is the reason why about 3000 years ago first coins in ancient Lydia were made not of pure gold, but rather of its naturally occurring alloy with silver, called electron, because silver in the alloy made coins harder. Unfortunately, nowadays encountering native gold for ordinary people is almost impossible, that is why in order to demonstrate your properties of this metal, I bought 1 gram of this precious metal, and it costs 70 euros. Just like all other gold found on Earth, these small bits of gold formed as a result of nuclear synthesis inside a far-off exploding supernova, or when two neutron stars collided. Also, gold's atomic mass isn't that big. It is way less abundant in Earth's crust than uranium or thorium. Even through the likely hot of their synthesis during cosmic explosion is much lower. It turns out that because of its high density and low chemical activity, at the early stage of Earth's formation, almost all gold on our planet sank into the planet's iron core, whereas thorium or uranium just oxidized it and dissolved in the molten minerals. That is why all that's left is to be content with a tiny amount of gold, which was ejected in lava from the Earth's center during volcano eruptions and brought by asteroids. Of course, modern technologies allow people to synthesize gold on their own. For instance, by bombarding bismuth atoms in a particle accelerator, knocking some protons and neutrons from them, receiving different isotopes of gold. However, the majority of such isotopes will be radioactive and the cost of 1 gram of gold produced with such particle accelerators will be a million times that of gold dug in mines. That is why we should be happy that all the hard labor has been done by nature inside huge and hot stars. As I mentioned earlier, gold's density is one of the highest being just 40% less dense than the densest metal, osmium. At the same time, pure gold is very soft. I decided to check how pure my nugget of gold is, using an old technique, which is biting it with my teeth. The shop didn't cheat, and there is a noticeable mark on the gold nugget left by my teeth, which indicates that this is fine gold. If either silver or copper is added to gold, becomes significantly harder and there will be no marks left by the teeth on such gold piece. Besides the biting test, we can also easily bend such a gold nugget with bare hands. In my opinion, its softness is similar to that of lead. For the sake of good order, I also decided to check the hardness of my gold nugget with this hardness tester, and also to see how its hardness compares with that of lead. Gold is slightly harder 
than lead, but it's a hundred times more expensive and twice as dense. That is why nowadays gold jewelry is not made of pure gold, rather it is made of alloys of gold either with silver or copper, in order for such jewelry to be harder. If you didn't know, the content of gold in your necklace can be determined using the marked fineness on your jewelry. For instance, the fineness 585 means that gold makes up 58.5%. However, this precious metal can be used not only for making jewelry, but also for making scientific devices. For instance, gold films is used for making highly sensitive detectors, which can detect just several atoms of highly radioactive and volatile elements. Speaking of foil, a pure gold can be rolled into a sheet, the thickness of which is thousand times smaller than the thickness of a human hair. Thus, you'll get a gold leaf. Now it's time to learn about the chemical properties of this precious metal. First, let us see how gold reacts with different acids. I decided to run the first test with concentrated muriatic acid, and I'm also going to see how an aluminium foil reacts with this acid. We can clearly see that aluminium immediately starts reacting with hydrochloric acid, whereas gold doesn't react with it at all. Now, let's see if gold can withstand concentrated nitric acid. For comparison, I have also submerged a piece of copper in it. Just in several seconds, copper actively starts dissolving in the nitric acid, releasing reddish gas, which is nitrogen dioxide. Whereas gold doesn't react with nitric acid, it can only get rid of the dim fat layer left by my fingers. For my next experiment, I decided to boil this poor piece of gold in a molten alkali. Some time later, the glass jar itself started dissolving in the sodium hydroxide. Speaking of gold, it didn't change and only stuck to the formed sodium metasilicate which formed when glass started reacting with sodium hydroxide. That's why it's fair to say that gold doesn't react neither with common acids nor with alkali. For the last experiment with this piece of gold, I decided to use a gas burner. When heated above 1000 degrees Celsius, gold starts melting, but along with that, it doesn't oxidize, that's what I call durability. Because of its durability, gold is used to cover contacts for many electric devices, for instance, processor connector spins, or contacts of computer data storage. Besides, gold reflects light very well, especially infrared light, that is why many satellites are covered with gold foil in order for them not to overheat in the sunlight. However, no matter how resistant this metal is to acids and alkali, under special conditions it can be chemically altered and dissolved. To show you that, I have submerged this piece of gold into 5 ml of hydrochloric acid, just like the previous time, and at first nothing was happening. But then, I added 1 ml of concentrated nitric acid and then started heating it all. And now, gold finally started to slowly dissolve. The thing is, when concentrated hydrochloric and nitric acid are mixed together, they create what's known as aqua regia, which from a chemical point of view is a solution containing chlorine, nitrogen dioxide and nitrosyl chloride. All these chemicals make the mixture highly corrosive, which is why such metals as gold and even platinum can dissolve in this solution. When gold is dissolved in aqua regia, it releases nitric oxide and creates chlorouric acid, dyes this solution in yellow color. That is why, even in spite of its high resistance to acids, even gold can be dissolved under certain conditions. Just in 20 minutes of heating in aqua regia, the 1 gram of gold completely dissolved, without any traces, and I think 
Unexperienced people won't even guess that there is gold in this solution. In such a way, you can't hide your gold treasures. Just as Hungarian chemist George de Hevesi hid gold Nobel medals of Max von Leue and James Frank, he did it when Nazi Germany occupied Denmark during the Second World War. If you didn't know, this yellow solution can be turned back into gold. I diluted it with water and then added a solution containing 2.6 grams of sodium metabisulfite. When chlorouric acid reacts with sodium metabisulfite, metallic gold starts depositing and it actually doesn't look like gold. The thing is, now these particles are too small and cannot reflect light like a whole nugget of gold. After depositing, I am filtering gold particles with a regular filter. In order not to lose any of the precious gold, I am not separating gold from the filter, rather I am drying the whole filter and then I am burning it in a small crucible. When being melted, the majority of gold remains in the flux, whereas the paper filter will just burn down. With the help of a gas burner, I managed to turn that weird powder back into a gold droplet. For my next experiments, I needed soluble compounds. That is why I dissolved my gold once again. Now I am going to use this solution for obtaining gold nanoparticles, which is a very promising material in medicine and other branches. The process is fairly simple. I am just adding a couple of droplets of 9% chlorouric acid solution to 200 ml of water and heating the solution to 95 degrees Celsius. After heating the mixture, I am adding 2 ml of 1% trisodium citrate and start waiting. A couple of minutes later, the color first changed to blue, then to violet and in the end it became bright red. The trisodium citrate is slowly reducing gold from its components, creating gold nanoparticles. Because of their small size, of just several tenths of nanometers, gold particles don't deposit on the bottom of the beaker, but rather they create a colloidal solution, which is a stable suspended matter. These particles resonate with light, changing the color of solution to red. If I point a laser at the solution, we will see how the beam of light is reflected of the suspended particles in the water solution. Interestingly enough, if we add a little bit of 5% of salt solution, the gold particles in it will start merging and the color of the solution will change. Since the salt solution has merged the gold particles, the beam of light passing through them gets brighter. Nowadays, such gold nanoparticles have a lot of potential application in medicine. For instance, molecules of medicine can be attached to such gold nanoparticles and they can be used to transport molecules to the needed organs in our body. Also, recently there has come our news that gold nanoparticles can be used to make novel tests for the very well-known recent disease, in which antibodies will be attached to gold particles reacting to COVID-19. To sum up, we can say that besides being used for making different gold jewelry, gold has a huge potential to be used for making future medicines and materials, all application of which we are yet to see. That is why if you want to see more chemical reaction with this metal, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up.